Okay, if that's okay, then let's move forward, right? Now, so we will continue to uh, work on this uh, edge trigger, but this time we use the so-called transmission, dynamic transmission gates. That is another thing, right? So try to compare to this circuit we discussed earlier. What's the difference between them? No feedback. I save two inverter. That is the same, but we save two inverter, right? But first of all, is this a positive or a negative edge trigger? Treat this as an exercise, right? Usually right before the exam, the student will say, do we have more exercise? But I try to give as many examples as possible in the lecture and every, uh, in every example, I try to really go into the details. So try to learn now, right? Is this a positive or negative edge trigger? Who think it's a positive? Please raise your hand. No one. How about negative? No one either. Who is not listening? Please raise your hand. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Who is listening? Please raise your hand. Why should I have asked this question? <laughs> oh my God, no one raise your hand. Thank you. <laughs> At least one is raising the hand. When I say raise your hand, I mean use the icon, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, anyway, thank you. Yeah, I should not have asked this. Uh, just humiliating myself. Okay, yeah. But anyway, uh, I know uh, some of you don't want to talk because uh, it's very, uh, how to say, uh, your environment might not be good. And also, yeah, some people just don't want to talk much. So, um, but hopefully you understand what I say, right? So what is a positive edge trigger register? It means that when the clock grows from zero to one, you copy to output, right? So it means that you need to do the first stage first when it is zero, right? So when clock is zero, clock bar equals to one. When clock bar equals to one, that means this one is on, this is off, right? And uh, sorry, again, this is on, right? I probably did uh, write something wrong before also, right? They are on at the same time because they are the uh, clock, right? Let, let me check again. I looks like I keep making this mistake and... Okay, it is not here. Yeah, and then at this time, this is off, this is off, right? So this one will get copy, right? I keep repeating, so... I hope you don't feel that I'm repeating too much, but that that's it, right? Uh, you, you're supposed to understand and do not say that in the you don't have enough practice. And then when the clock is on, then uh, it's one, right? Then this is off, this is off, this is on, this is on. Then the data go through, right? So at zero, you prepare at one, you copy to the output. So this is a, a positive edge trigger. Okay, any questions? Okay, if no question, right? So first uh, thing we want to study is we say that we have two less inverter and two... Uh, two less transmission gate compared to the uh, full one, not actually not compared to this one, right? So what are the source of C1 and C2? Why we have C1 and C2? 
this C1, C2 are the parasitic. Again, I hope that you will see this when, uh, when, uh, when you look at this circuit, right? So C1 and C2, where did they come from? Of course, they come from the wire, definitely. But at the same time, they come from the gate capacitance. Right, C, uh, and maybe I should just call it C1 gate, right? The gate capacitance from the next stage. And you also uh, come from the uh, capacitance from the previous stage, but which is the drain capacitance, CDB, right? N and P. And what else? If they are on, right, or, or, or off, you, you, you also have CDG right, CGD. So here I don't say whether it's just overlap or uh, the full capacitance because it can be on, it can be off. So I just put this. So just remember that you do have capacitance due to this, right? Now the question is, what is the setup time of this circuit? So turn out we can have two different, so this is a very important example. We can have two different answers, but they need to be self-consistent throughout the derivation, okay? In terms of setup time, basically we're saying that when this clock comes up at T2, I want to copy. So it is better to have the data ready here, okay? So definitely it's T1 plus I1, right? Uh, let me write it as T, T1 plus T, I1, right? Because when I clock goes up, when I try to copy, I want D to be ready here. So it means T1 plus T, I1 before, you need to be ready here. That is the setup time. Okay. How about the whole time? Once I copy, does the D need to hold? No need, right? Because once I copy, even you change the D, this one is off, right? Because when it is a blue where I copy, this is off. You can keep changing D, I don't care. It are not affecting me. So the whole time is zero, okay? Then how about clock to Q, right? Once I go up, I will copy this to T, right? At the same time, I copy through I, right? So that, it is T, T2 plus T, I3. This is solution one. Is this okay? Any questions? Yeah, when we had the face-to-face -face class, usually some student will show me some facial expression and ask question, but now, it's just a one-way talk. So I really don't know if you get it. That's why I keep asking, right? So if you have any question, please do let me know. Okay, then there's another solution. Like I can also say that the T setup time is just T solution two. I can also say this T setup time is just T, T one. Right, it doesn't matter because I just think that, hey, make sure at least you copy to here, okay? Because after this, when the clock goes up, I'm going to turn off this. No matter what you do here, it's not going to affect me, right? So even you call it TT1, that is okay. But the T hole is still zero. However, however, what is the T clock to Q? When this goes up, I need to wait for it to propagate through I1, T2, and also I3. So now T clock to Q will become T I1 plus T T2 plus T I3, right? So two different solutions, but you see that they are all valid, right? The other people who use your device to design their circuit, as long as they follow one of them, there would be no problem, no timing issue, okay? Is this okay? Okay, 
then let's go to the um, yeah, this one I think we already said of course this is a positive edge trigger we talked about this already right now so what is the problem for this one for this setup this setup the most important problem is the crop overlap issue So how does it overlap again? If this is the ideal crop, go in, right? Up and down, up and down. And then this is the inverted version. It will be high when the crop is low. And it takes a little bit more time to go low when the crop is high, right? So there is a shifting, right? So let me draw it again. I hope you are very familiar with this. The crop bar needs to be go after. After so this is one one overlap, and then we have zero zero overlap. Right now, if you have this problem, if you have the crop overlapping problem, then your t hole time is no longer zero. I claim that t hole has to be larger than t one one overlap. Why is that? Because think about when the crop goes up, right? Think about this region. At this region, blue. When your crop goes up, then of course this is on. This is on, right? That I copy data from this point to this point. Now I actually expect this one to be off. But it is on, unfortunately, due to on, due to one, one overlap. Uh, not this one, sorry, this is off, right? Because clock is already one. But This one is on, right? I was expecting both of these to be off, right? Because the crop goes up, so this is PMOS is off, and the crop should crop bar should go down, so this should be off, but it has overlapped, so this is still on. Because of this, the data can still affect my result, right? So I want it at least the data to hold, do not change, at least for one, one overlap time. Otherwise, it will keep propagating and eventually contaminates my result. Uh, is this clear? Any questions? Is that clear? Okay. And then another issue is this, right? We also want the T00. Now for 00 overlap is different. We need to control it. We need to make 00 overlap to be smaller than T1 or the delay of T1 plus delay of I1 plus the delay of T2, right? Because this one I should use red. Remember was T1 plus I1 plus D2? This just like talk like the clock to Q, right? So what happened if both of them are zero? If both of them are zero, then it means that, okay, yeah, this is on, right? And this is off, uh, this is on. 
this is off. So you see that the signal, right? The D can propagate. from D to Q directly. Okay, then you are going to contaminate the data again. So what you want to do is that the overlap should be short enough so that before you reach this propagate through, I already have no overlap. And then I turn this off. Okay, so back here, better change to off. Right? Before TT1 plus TI1 plus TT2. This is what I'm trying to say here. Okay? I, I, I hope that is clear and uh, time's up. I will stop here. Let me know if you have any questions.